average American overspends their budget by more than $7,000 a year. That's like $20 a day. Guys, we are going to fix it. There is one simple budgeting technique that works whether you're using cash or credit or a debit card. It works no matter what your budget is, no matter what income you have. With just one envelope, you can stick to your budget every single month, and I'm going to show you how. Hey there, I'm Brittany Flammer with videos here all about budgeting and money saving tips. If you would like to be able to afford to live a life you love, then make sure you subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss any videos. Now, let's be honest, in the comments down below, let me know, have you ever overspent? Have you ever gone over budget? I know I have, but trust me, this tip is going to help you. We want to keep it simple. Just like anything else in life, the more complicated you make it, the more likely you are to fail or to give up. So we're going to keep it simple. Rather than having like 50 gazillion billion budgets and categories, we're going to keep just a few. At the beginning of the month, we're going to start, first of all, by paying ourselves first. We want to put money into savings. It can be retirement, for a vacation, for a house, whatever you are saving for, you want to put it in first. Because if you wait till the end of the month to see what's left over, there's not going to be anything left over. So you've got to pay that first. And if you have debt, you should be paying the debt off before or instead of paying for savings. Now we're going to move on to bills. First, we start with the boring bills. These are the necessary things for living that most all of us have to pay, like rent or mortgage, utilities, like electricity, gas, water, insurance. They're, well, they're boring. That's why I call them the boring bills. They're things that are usually paid on a monthly basis. They're pretty fixed. Yes, you have some control over your electricity and how much, because it's going to vary a little bit every month, but they're fixed in the sense that you have to pay them every month or your power will get shut off or you'll get kicked out of your apartment. So we're going to start with these fixed boring bills. I like to automate these boring bills as much as possible. So I don't have to think about it. I don't have to worry about it. If they can be, they are automatically paid every month. So I don't even have to worry about them. Then we move on to the fun bills. Now, I call these fun bills because we have control over them. These are more of the day-to-day -day purchases. Most people think that you break your budget on big ticket items, but that's not really the case. Really, it's our day-to-day -day spending, the five, 10, $15 that add up here and here and here. Over time, they add up, and that's what makes us break our budget. It's our spending habits. So we want to control our spending habits. And this is where the envelope that I love comes into play. These fun bills are going to include things like groceries. Now, I know, I know groceries are a necessity. We need food to live. However, I count it as a fun bill because we have control over it. How much and what we eat. It's the difference between ramen noodles and steak. We have that kind of control. And it's a weekly, daily, it's a frequent expense. It includes not only groceries, but also clothing, eating out, date nights, maybe a babysitter, jersey for basketball for this kid, soccer cleats for this kid, shampoo. There are so, so many things it could include. There could be so many categories. We are going to combine them into one category. But it gets tricky. How much do you spend on these things? Well, let's talk about groceries. If you do a quick search online how much you should spend on groceries, you might get a percentage. You might get a number. USA Today says the average American spends $600 on food. Uh, another study said 550. The USDA actually has a document, a chart for how much you should spend on groceries if you are meeting that food, not the food pyramid, but the food plate. If you are eating a healthy, balanced diet, they recommend how much you should spend based on the age and number of people in your family. And for our family of seven, we would be spending over $1,100. And that's doing the frugal chart. Yeah, that's like half of our income. That's not going to work for us. So if you look online, you will see a broad variety. Everyone says something different. And every family is different. You might have two kids or 10 kids. You're going to spend different based on your income, based on how many kids you have. Several years ago, I found Jordan Page. And this is also where I got the idea for this envelope, but I have tweaked it. But she recommends $100 per person per family. So that means our family of seven people would have $700 a month budgeted for all consumables. So this means groceries, all bathroom stuff like toilet paper, cleaning supplies, diapers, shampoo, soap, all of that stuff is included. 
and it would be $700 a month. Now, we don't actually spend that much in our family. I feel like that is a good rule of thumb. If you're just trying to get an idea of how much you should spend, I think that's a great place to start. And that's the beauty of this envelope system. It doesn't matter if you spend a lot or a little, we can adapt it. As for the rest of the fun bills, it's gonna be personal. It's going to vary drastically from family to family, from person to person. You can also go ahead and look at your last couple of months and get an average on how much you've spent on all these things and use that number. I'll share with you the example for our family. Here is our budget for fund bills. So we add it all up and it ends up being $715 a month. So much I can buy with $715 and I feel pretty good about life at the beginning of the month. But then I make one trip to Sam's, I spend a couple of minutes on Amazon, or I make one run alone to Target to get away from the kids so I don't go crazy, and it's all blown. I'm one week into the month and I have nothing left. So it's ramen noodles for the rest of the month. No way, we are not gonna stick to our budget. If I start at the beginning of the month with all $700, I'm gonna be out really quickly. And it's gonna be three more weeks until I get more money. So I'm never going to stick to my budget. So we are going to introduce weekly budgeting. Take that, whatever your number is, for us it's $715, take that and divide it by four because most months have four weeks in them. So we do the math and I get $179 per week. Now, I don't like that number, so I'm gonna round to 180. Just makes me feel better. You can do your exact number. I like to round. So I got $180 every week. So I pull out my envelope, and for week number one, I'm gonna write 180. That is how much money I have to spend for the week. I will put my envelope right here inside my wallet. It's a clasp wallet that I don't clasp. I just stick the envelope right in here. So whenever I go to buy anything, I have, I use my wallet to buy stuff, so whenever I go to buy anything, I have my envelope right there. So when I go grocery shopping, I get to the checkout, I open up my wallet to pay, I will write down how much I'm going to spend. So in this example, I went to Walmart and spent $56. So I just do the simple math. 180 minus 56 is, I gotta cheat, 124. And I like to round to the nearest dollar because let's be honest, math is not my strong suit. I don't wanna get tied up with decimals. I just round to the nearest dollar. So now I have $124. So I hop onto Amazon. It's really nifty water container storage holder thing my sister-in-law recommended that looked really nifty and it was 14 bucks. So now I write that down as I go to buy it, as I check out on Amazon, I write it down and do the math, which is 110. So now I have $110 left. Every time I pay for something, every time I buy something, every time I spend money, I subtract it, just like a check ledger, but it's right there in my wallet, really quick, really easy. The week, whatever money is left, I write in this little square. That is money that is completely fun money. I have stuck to my budget and that's what's left over. So I can go get my nails done if I have enough money. I can grab a drink. I can do whatever I want. I can put it towards debt. I can put it towards our vacation. It is fun money so I can do whatever I want with it. On the flip side, if the week's not over yet, but you run out of money, you're at zero, you've spent it all, guess what? You're done spending for the week. You don't do any more shopping, you don't go buy anything. But the beauty of this system is today's Friday and I'm out of money. I only have to wait until Monday and I've got money again. So I can handle a day or two of no spending. But if it's the 15th of the month that I'm out of money and I have to wait till the first, I'm not gonna make it two weeks. I can do two days, but not two weeks. You can use any old envelope. Don't use the small ones. You want to use the full size ones. These are the standard. They're number 10 envelopes, standard size envelopes. I get mine at the dollar store or Walmart or on Amazon. You can get them any of those places. They're the standard size, uh, size envelope. You can just write your own, write the month, and you can divide up the four weeks on your own. I do, however, have cute ones with lots of different styles. I'll link to them down below if you want some cuter ones. And if by chance we're in a month that has five weeks, I just divide by five. So let's see if I can do that math. 180, no, not 180. 715 divided by five is 143. So on the months that have five weeks, I only get 143 per week. I simply divide it by five instead of four, get 143, so I don't spend as much. You could keep the same budget, so I could do the 180, and just know I'm gonna spend a little bit more that week, but if you get paid bi-weekly, you're gonna have a couple of extra paychecks in there, so it'll work out. So either you divide it by five and have less each week, or you spend a little bit more that month, 
up to you and your personal finances. I have been doing this for years and I love it because it works. Just remember, it's the everyday expenses, the everyday spending habits that create who we are that will help us stick to our budget. So divide your budget into weeks, use this awesome envelope and it will help you stick to your budget. So you're not one of those people that overspends by more than $7,000. You guys can do it. Check out my envelopes in the link down below. Check out my playlist. I have so many quick and easy tips for saving you money right over here on this playlist with more coming weekly. Thanks so much. See you in the next video.